And now to an inside look at one of the most unique and complex relationships in the country, the one between a president and vice president. The new book, First in Line, reveals what it's really like to be a heartbeat away from the most powerful office in the world. Kate Anderson Brower is the author. Kate, good morning. Good to have you here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I mean, the VP job, there's all these famous funny quotes about how it's kind of like the worst job in America because in the Constitution, it's so undefined. You just sit around and wait for the president, something awful to happen to him. Exactly. George H.W. Bush, Ronald Reagan's vice president, said, you die, I fly, because <laughs> he would get dispatched to all of these state funerals around the world. But, you know, it's a very important position. In the past 55 years, we've had four vice presidents become president, um, 14 vice presidents in the history of the United States have become president. It's a very consequential role. In a way, it's a laboratory for an yes. aspiring president, which can lead to some tension. You talked to... Did you talk to every living vice president? I did. I, over two and a half years, I interviewed more than 200 people, every living former vice president, so all six of them, Republicans and Democrats. And it was just a fascinating look at this relationship. And I also talked to President Carter. Let's talk about Vice President Mike Pence, obviously the current occupant of the office. I was very interested to read that he and former Vice President Joe Biden have a somewhat close relationship. They, they talk monthly. They do, at book. least, I mean, uh, Joe Biden told me they, they talk at least once a month. And when a visiting head of state comes to visit President Trump, they sometimes talk to Biden, too. You know, the King of Jordan went to Washington, then took a helicopter and visited Biden in Delaware. And so um, he's talked to the Greek prime minister. It's kind of a back channel relationship that Biden has to this White House, and it's through Mike Pence. Mike Pence obviously has been extremely loyal to Donald Trump. And I know you spoke to his brother. He really had some revelations about the dynamic between Vice President Pence and President Trump. I was really surprised by that because uh, Mike Pence's older brother Greg told me that um, Mike Pence said that Donald Trump reminds him of their father, who was a very of the Pence's father. The po yes, and this you know he's a domineering personality. Um, he was a Korean War vet, and you know you always knew where he stood. Greg Pence told me, and, and the same is true for Donald Trump. Obviously, Donald Trump is 13 years older than Mike Pence. Um, they have this very. It's a relationship. There is certainly a degree of fear there, but he's walking this tightrope and it's always hard for every vice president but this one in particular because he doesn't want to upset President Trump and make it look like he's doing too much um, and then the other way he doesn't he doesn't want it to look like he's not doing anything because he clearly wants to run yeah exactly it, it, you have a lot of interesting tidbits in the book one of them was that Melania Trump was fairly involved in the selection of Mike Pence. We knew that the, the children were, the adult children, but I, I, I wasn't aware of Melania's role. I was surprised by that, actually, that she said in the final decisive meeting um, at their golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey, that the, whoever her husband chose must be clean, was her word. So that means no messy financial entanglements, no affairs, and they were looking at people like Newt Gingrich, Chris Christie, who come with a lot of baggage. And so her voice was a really important one in that decision. Decision. Let's talk about some other past administrations. We'll do the lightning round. Who did you think had the most contentious or competitive relationship? Um, I think it's, well, I think it was really difficult at the end for Dick Cheney and George W. Bush in the second term. And, and Cheney even told me that he lost a lot of his power in the second term. It's so interesting because they were thick as thieves exactly. at the beginning of the administration. And Cheney was regarded as the most influential vice president. Yes, exactly. I mean, and of course, Al Gore and Bill Clinton at the very end. But these relationships disintegrate over time, which is what makes Joe Biden and Barack Obama really unique because their bond grew. Another interesting factoid from your book, that there was really a written agreement between President Obama and Vice President Biden about what, like the yeah. particulars of what their relationship would be, kind of like a contract or something? It was, and it lists several points, like, you know, JB must see all paper that crosses BO's desk. I mean, that was a shorthand they used in this memo. Um, and I thought it was really fascinating. And, you know, Joe Biden said he literally wanted to be the last person in the room when a decision was made. And usually vice presidents do not criticize presidents you know, even privately in meetings with other cabinet members because they don't want to do anything to undermine that relationship. Well, it's a great read. Political frenemies, the vice president and the president, always an interesting subject to mine. All right, Kate, thank you so much. And to find out more about First in Line, go to today.com slash shop. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.